Yo, what's up, party people? Travis Peters here today with another lesson on the increased life. We're going to be reading a little excerpt from my new book coming out, Kingdom Money Mastery. Now, you guys are going to want to pick this up. It's not quite out yet. Still doing a little bit of revision, but I'm telling you all, this there is there is nothing like this on the planet. There's There's no book like this. There is no training like this. There is... There ain't nothing like this. Trust me. I read them. I looked. It wasn't there, so I had to make it. So we're going to read just a little little excerpt, and I might do a little series on this, just because I want to start getting some of this content out. You guys know that we have the Kingdom Money Mastery online course. This is the companion guide that goes with it. You're going to want to pick this up, though. There are new stories. There are new lessons. There's just something about having it in your hands. It's a great companion guide to the video lessons that we have also. I'm telling you, you're going to want this on your bookshelf, right? You're going to want to use this as a reference. You're going to have this handy whenever you have a financial situation you're going through, whether money's tight, whether you're worried about money, uh, whatever it is, whether you need some increase in your life, you need to go pick this book up off the shelf and build your faith on it, all right? So we're going to talk real quick. I just want to kind of, like I said, read some of this to you. I want to talk to, talk, talk to you about activating your blessing covenant. And we got a whole training on what we call making the great shift. And essentially what that has to do with is how you see yourself on the inside based off of God's word. And again, we go deeper in this, but the nutshell version is that God's already made you prosperous and wealthy. He gave you the Abrahamic covenant. He made a deal with Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you famous. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. In other words, I'm going to bless you. So you can turn and be a blessing to others. It goes on to talk about how uh, God made Abraham richer by the day, increasing him until he was extremely wealthy. That's how it puts it. In cattle, silver, uh, gold, and livestock. And then employees later on. You find out he had over 300 trained men just in his personal army. Like crazy stuff, right? Like next level prosperity. So blessed that the king of one of the lands says you have to leave. You got more power than we do. You're too big. We can't sustain you. You got to go to another country. That's some blessing right there. Then we learn in Galatians 3.29. I'm giving you such the nuts. So I don't even know if I should do this because I really want you to, to go deeper on this stuff because it, it makes a difference. But in Galatians 3.29, God said, if you are in Christ, if you're a Christian, everything I promised Abraham now belongs to you. So that's where we pick off in the book, how to activate your blessing covenant. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to read this to you, but in just a minute, I want to give you an example, kind of like how, a real life example. Here's what this looks like in real life. All right, so stick around for that. Um, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I got a gift for you. Link below, but you can head over to financialincrease101.com. I put together a free guide on how to live a life of increase, not decrease. I'm not going to show you how to budget your life away. I'm going to show you how to escape the budgeted life so you can live big now and later get yourself freed up financially so you can focus on the things god has for you so financial increase 101.com grab your free gift it'll bless you all right what i'm about to show you here will change your life if you do what i say this is the only thing if this is the only thing you get out of this book then i've been successful this is called making the great shift in the same way you now see yourself as a king you must also see yourself as blessed wealthy and healthy now all right up until this point it is most likely you've seen yourself as a person who was at the bottom of the hill trying to scrape and claw his or her way up to the top where riches and success are awaiting you but the truth is you're not a poor person trying to become wealthy you are a wealthy person the enemy is trying to make poor you're not a sick person trying to get well you're a well person the enemy is trying to make sick you're not a broke, busted, or unlucky person. You are a blessed person that the enemy's trying to deceive. He's trying to get you to give up what God has already given you based off your circumstances. The devil wants you to think you're not blessed and prosperous based on what your eyes see when you look at your bank account. If the enemy can get you to say, oh, I guess this faith stuff isn't working. Look at my bank account. God, I don't know why you're not blessing me. If the devil gets you to say that, if he gets you, if if he can get that to come out of your mouth, he wins and you lose. This is 
powerful as that. It's as simple as that. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, Fix your eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Fix your eyes on the unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Your bank account situation is temporary. Your job situation, your money situation, all temporary. Fix your eyes, fix your thoughts on the eternal stuff, the unseen stuff. Don't get caught up in what you see. Get caught up in what God's word says to be true. God is saying, I've made you wealthy now. It's not something to be achieved. You already have it now. Use it and activate it. Live, act, and make decisions from a place of being wealthy now. From a mindset of abundance, not from a place of lack. Here's a scenario to illustrate what I mean. Let's say it's a typical day. And just so you know, this type of stuff has happened to me many times. Let's say it's a typical day. Sun is shining. You had a great day at work. You're in a great mood. You come home. You check the mail on your way in. And you find a letter from the IRS saying you actually owe $4,000 from a mistake that your accountant made. Again, ask me how I know if the number was actually $10,000 for me. Knowing that you don't have that much in savings, you start to feel a certain kind of way. Your blood begins to boil. Your emotions are swirling. You take the letter inside, and you're about to tell your wife about it, but before you can get the words out, she blurts, the air conditioner went out today. I called the company, and they said it would be another three grand to replace it. Now here's where the rubber meets the road. Here's where you get to find out what you really believe. Here's what you get to find out where your faith really is at. All right. Great day. It was rocked by a bill that you got in the mailbox that you don't have the money to pay. It wasn't your fault. And then hit your, your while you're down, the devil kicks you and your air conditioner went out and you got another $3,000 bill on top of that, which you don't have the money for that either. All right. Now you get to find out what's inside you. The Christian who does not know about his blessing covenant will respond angrily, confused, and frustrated with things like, God, why aren't you blessing me? What the heck am I doing wrong here? What on earth is going on? I thought you said you'd bless me. Why are you doing this? All right, that's the Christian who does not know about their covenant. Or maybe they don't have understanding or revelation on it. They don't get it. But the Christian who does know they have the Abrahamic blessing covenant will remain cool and respond calmly and confident with, well, thank God I'm blessed. God's my source. God's my provider. He sees what's going on. And I know this didn't catch him by surprise. That means he's already provided a way for me to pay these things off. Praise God. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to use 1 Peter 5, 7, and we're going to cast our cares upon him. Do you see the difference? I want you to check yourself. Which way would you have responded? Or think back to the last time something like this happened. How did you respond? What did you do? This is where we check ourselves. This is important to do. The person who walks in their blessing covenant already sees himself as blessed, wealthy, and prosperous now. Even if they get an unexpected bill in the mail. They see themselves as someone who is fully supplied now even if their bank account says otherwise. They thank God that they have the blessing covenant and financial protection on their situation because otherwise they'd be in real trouble. Man, I'm telling you guys, this is such a better way to live. Seeing yourself on top of the mountain now. When you do this, you become unfazable. Bad news doesn't mess with you. Um, I've, I've, over the years, as we develop and train in this, it's things like, You'd get a bad report or a bill, unexpected bill or something. You get laid off from your job unexpectedly, and it would like take you out for a while. Man, you'd be you'd be bummed, worried, distracted, concerned, anxious, and then God would come through, and you'd feel kind of bad because you'd be like, God, I apologize for worrying. You always get me out of the stuff. You always take me to the next level. I don't know why I was so worried. I apologize, man. I feel. I feel I feel bad because I'm like, gosh, I, did. I wasn't trusting God, but he came through like he always does anyway. But then the next time, you remember what happened, and you get over it a little faster. Maybe it only takes you out for a couple hours. 
And the next time, man, it only bugs you for like 30 minutes. And then the time after that, it doesn't phase you at all. You know God is coming through. You trust him. Your trust is up. Your faith is high. Your hope is high. You know your God. You know he loves you. You understand it. You got revelation of it. So you don't have to be scared, worried, or distracted, or concerned about it anymore. It's like living on top of the mountain. You have the victory now. You have your desires now. You have it now. Make a decision from a place of abundance. Uh, the chapter keeps on going. Essentially, I don't want to read all of this to you because I want you to, well, one, I want you to get it. It's got assignments in there. It's got step-by-step uh, -step stuff to do after each chapter. I mean, it's, yeah, it's cool. Chapter three coming up, how the devil works to keep you broke. You're going to want to get that one. You know what I'm saying? It's good. But the point here is you're on top of the mountain. You've made the great shift. You now see yourself as wealthy. It's it's not, God, why aren't you blessing me? Because you got a bill in the mail. Yeah, the bills are going to come. The bill in the mail stuff's going to come. You have an enemy. He's trying to get you to just give up. You know, in the book of James, I hadn't seen this so recently. I didn't, I didn't get this. But it talks about your faith being tested. See, I always looked at it as like I was being tested. No. It's the enemy testing your faith. He's poking at you with some sticks to see how strong your faith is. If you're going to just quickly give up and give in to sickness, give in to poverty, give in to lack, well, I guess it's just my life now. I guess it's just how it is. I remember watching a TV show years and years ago. And as you develop your faith for finances, you, be you become more aware of this stuff. You can discern these things. It seems like wisdom to the natural world, to your mind seems logical, but in the faith realm, the real realm, you see what's really happening. You see the spirit of fear behind things. You see how the devil's poking at you with some sticks, testing your faith, and how quickly Christians give up and lay down their armor. So on the, on the show, it was one of those like uh, real estate shows where they help you sell your house real fast. And this guy, he unexpectedly got laid off. They'd moved into their dream home, so they leveled up. Expenses were higher than before, and they moved into a dream house, dream neighborhood. It was beautiful. I don't know the exact stats, but I'd say it's probably a five or six thousand square foot home. I mean, just gorgeous home. They he gets a call on the drive home from work and gets let go on his drive home. He immediately, like, <laughs> I hope you guys can see this. He immediately calls his wife and says, "Honey, we're gonna have to sell the home." I just got let go, and I don't know, one, I don't know how we'll be able to afford the home without my job, and two, I don't know when another job like this is going to come around. So it would be wise, we need to sell the home and move into something a little safer. Well, this was his wife's dream home, and she's crying when she's telling the story. She's like, man, we got the, the stairway right in the entrance. Like I pictured my kids lining up for their prom pictures. On this stairway, I'm just I've I've dreamed out, I've mapped out, I can see it. I mean, she's already living in the house, but she had all these beautiful dreams for her family that were going to come through and flow through this house. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a wife's heart. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a mom's heart. And she goes, my husband called, told me the story, and although it broke my heart to have to sell the home, I knew he was right. I knew it was wise. It was the wise thing to do. And I'm watching this thing about no. Like, throw something through the TV. I'm going to figure out where this person lives. Grab him by the shirt collar, slap him, say, you didn't even try. Like, the devil tested you. He tested your faith, and you gave up your armor like that. I mean, you laid your shield down. You laid your sword down. That's not a person with the Abrahamic covenant. Yes, so many Christians live this way. They do it all the time with all kinds of things. Check yourself, please. Are you doing this? All that man needed to do is say, God, you know my situation. Matthew 6, says, seek you first, seek your kingdom first, your way of doing things, and you'll add everything I need to my life. So God, I'm coming to you, I'm seeking your kingdom. You saw what happened. What do I do? What's my instructions? Do I need to pray something, say something, call somebody, start a business? What is it? What's my next step? And God would give him the answer. James 1, 5 says, if you need wisdom in anything, ask God, and he will liberally, that means generously, give it to you. Don't know what to do? Ask God. 
Seek him out. So many Christians aren't doing this. They're acting like that guy in the TV show. They get one bad report. They make a decision based on a place of poverty and lack and running out, and that's how it's going to be. And It's like you get a doctor's report, and you just say, well, that's it. I'm going to die. No, you go to God, and he said, no, I'm going to live and not die. First Peter 2.24 says, I'm healed by your stripes. I'm not going to receive the doctor's report. I'm going to receive the report of the Lord, and that's what I live by. That's how we do this faith stuff, guys. That's Kingdom Money Mastery. This book doesn't just talk about money. It talks about how to use your faith in all areas of life. We focus it on finances in this book, but it's teaching you principles that you can use anywhere. Don't let the devil talk you out of what God already gave you, gave you when it comes to health, money, the call in your life. You have authority. You have power that God gave you to do big things for the kingdom. Let's do it. Let's get after it. I love you guys. I hope this helped you. Um, get on my email list below. Get on financialincrease101.com and get on that email list. Get that free guide because uh, when this book releases, I'll be letting you guys know first uh, if you're on my email list. So you guys will be able to pre-order. Plus, I'll probably, you know how I do. I usually come up with a bunch of bonuses and cool stuff to give the people who pre-order and get my stuff early uh, because life reward actions, action takers. Faith rewards action takers and Travis rewards action takers. So make sure you get on there. Uh, links are below. All kinds of cool stuff coming at you. The Kingdom Money Mastery and the Increased Life. I love you guys. I'm going to keep making these videos. I'm going to keep making these podcasts. Um, thank you for the testimonials that you guys send me, the comments, the messages, the emails of how these things are changing your life. Keep sending them to me. Those encourage me. They help me. Uh, they fuel me to keep making these. And I love hearing it. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.